after a long hiatus of, you know, vacation and whatnot, you're now listening again to Breaking Down Security. And I am Brian Brake, of course. And with me, as always, is Ms. Berlin and Mr. Betcher. Hello. Howdy. And so I've been on vacation the last, I don't know, week and a half almost. And yeah, me too. Well, yeah, <laughs> you you had a really awful. I, I wouldn't even <laughs> Let's call. Let's talk it. about your time. I'm sure you had a much better time than I did. Well, yeah, I mean, we we uh, it was midwinter break for my daughter uh, and at her school, so um, people from Seattle tend to go and uh, visit the sun. Uh, so we went down to sunny. Uh, Lo- uh, Los Angeles, California. Uh, it, it was cold, uh, more than was sunny. It? Oh God, it was. It was only a couple. Of, it was like in the mid fifties. Uh, really? Yeah. I mean, there was only a day or two where it got really nice, and I I took shorts the whole freaking time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, it was okay. I could wear shorts, but yeah. The, I mean, fifties is short weather. Uh, yeah, as long as you're wearing a jacket, because it was fifties and like. <laughs> 20 mile an hour winds so yeah or um what about what 10 kilometer winds god now i'm gonna have to go look that up <laughs> so but so it was fun we, we did uh we did universal studios we did um we did uh disneyland of course um but yeah it was uh it was a lot of fun Miss Berlin, you had a very interesting. Oh, thirty-two kilometers. I'm sorry, thirty-two kilometers is twenty miles an hour. Thirty-two point one eight six nine, according to Google. So I apologize to. Uh, I'm an American. That's that's my excuse. I figure, I figure people at this point should just be able, to, you know, uh, to, if if you don't know what it is, do your own conversion. I'm, I'm a U.S. American, and yeah. unfortunately, I don't convert kilometers very easily. So, yeah. you had a yeah, really I, awful I, week, Miss Berlin. I was in the hospital several times oh my gosh did you die no not yet okay good. I, I wanted to die okay but i did not <sighs> well um i'm glad you're not dead i died a little hearing about it oh god yes. i'm sitting yeah. there i'm sitting there reading this um on twitter and she's like oh you know kidney stone and i'm like no i don't want kidney stones no it's pretty bad uh, so you're better don't, now though don't they, recommend don't, you don't recommend them. <laughs> negative one star on Yelp for kidney yes. stones. Uh, right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. I hope to never get them again. And I'm pretty, I mean, I'm almost all better. I have like another two weeks of medicine, medicine to take, but yeah, they gave you painkillers or is like anti-inflammatories. Um, or what? It's like, um, Oh, is morphine pretty good. Yeah, no, I didn't get any morphine. I did get a lot of other pain pain medication, but no, this is like, um, so like I don't get any infections or anything right. like that. Uh, I'm sorry, we did actually, uh, we probably did disclose HIPAA information. So, um, are, are you cool with that? We probably violated HIPAA. Do I have by, to like sign a waiver or something? Well, well, I mean, I'd have to sign something. <laughs> yeah, we. It's prob- in your inbox. It's no, it was great. pretty funny though. I tweeted out a picture of the. Was it the first time? I, yeah, it was the first time I went in because I hadn't taken my um, phone charger. I didn't know how long I was going to be in the ER. Right. Um, I had driven myself, and because that's what you do is you drive yourself to the ER. Um, and I, uh, a guy that I used to know because I used to work at a hospital, mm-hmm. uh, and this was not the hospital I used to work at, but he must have changed or whatever. Uh, let me borrow his iPhone cable. And then there was only two places to plug it in. There was like a heart rate monitor thing that I wasn't hooked up to, but I tried to plug into that first and it didn't supply me any power. So I just plugged into the computer in the room. I I would hope, I would hope that's be, Oh wait. So you could either plug it into the heart monitor or the EMR system that the EMR computer. Oh, and it was, hysterical so he walks in because he knows like what i do right and uh he's like oh man our it guy saw that that freak <laughs> <laughs> well I, i'm actually kind of okay that the heart i'm bet i'm better off than knowing that the heart monitor didn't work because if you had been able to short out a heart monitor or, you know charge with the heart monitor that means it was on but yeah um, yeah that's wow so if you drive yourself to the er do they have valet parking oh Th- these are things that that these are questions i have things you know? that make you no, go hmm. they did not 
Oh, that sucks. There was valet parking. I mean, the, hosp- the hospital near my house super tiny. Yeah. Like, so, they, they have, like, ten beds or something. Right. It's very, very small. Oh. No valet. Well, um, well, I'm glad. I'm glad you're doing better, and you know, Thanks. Um, me too. I'm sorry that you weren't able. You and Mr. Betcher weren't able to record anything last week. Um, I wasn't able to do anything. I couldn't like put my children to bed or feed them or walk. <laughs> well, now, if you, you would have thought about it, we you could have got on Slack on your phone, and we could have recorded from the hospital, right? I could have, right. yeah, I could have. Right. That would have been interesting. No, that's yeah. fine. I'm I'm glad you uh, you took the time to take care of you. So, um, uh, I, we don't have insurance, so I don't know how this Damn is going to work. I'm sorry, <laughs> our benefits here at break you know break sec right. world headquarters is my normal crap. benefits suck anyways so we'll see how that works oh wow so your employer doesn't you, listen you might to this, see right? a gofundme soon <laughs> your, your your employer doesn't listen to this obviously so <laughs> you know they might i'm not, I'm not sure well yeah. okay they know they have crappy insurance oh well all right that, that's good then so um well mr betcher how you been this week any interesting uh, malwares that we need to know about oh um yeah we've been getting the same stuff you know, like the Imitet type Trojans, lots of um, attacks on email, trying to get your email accounts. Right. So we call them cred stealers. Right. They want designed to steal your credentials and then spread that way. And then uh, I think they probably take those uh, once they get them. They'll have 30 people in the organization. If they maintain that persistence, they'll probably sell that to someone who's looking to infiltrate a specific company. Right, right. So that's probably what they do. Um, There are attacks that are targeted um, to a specific company. They'll mm -hmm. they'll tailor make the entire thing start to finish to that target. Right. Right. So that's how that works. They'll they'll gain a bunch of email addresses, target that particular company and and try to get in that way. And you know it's for that company. There's all the signs. It's uh tailor made. They'll they'll even have documentation or news articles on that company as well. Hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of that going on. You you said it was boring. If you're, if you're not seeing it, I'm I, I would be surprised if you work in a large company you said it was boring is that because you've seen all of it before or it, it does it get boring after a while when you're trying to hunt malware in your company and it's all the same stuff that you've already defended against yeah sort of i mean yeah it's there's a level of accomplishment because you say well okay I've, I've thwarted this one i've thwarted that one and taken care of that one. Oh, that's old i've seen that before but yeah you um you keep looking for the next big thing Right. right. That's how it was when I first joined and we were seeing new stuff all the time and now it's kind of tapered off. Hmm. So they do have analytics on your company. And if they're able to, if, if you are able to defend those attacks, they'll escalate their attacks to a point and then they may just give up or right. they may target your company specifically with these tailor-made emails and things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's definitely a progression. They're not going to send you their good stuff right away if you're going to fall for the crappy stuff. Right. So you're going to get the crappy stuff until you prove to them, and they're pretty organized, that um, you can handle it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, that's... That's awesome. I mean, that you have pretty much worked yourself out of a job in many cases, right? Well, I guess that's what we all have to do, right? We have to basically put our past self out of a job and uh, keep progressing, advancing, and making ourselves better so that we can do the cool stuff, the cooler stuff, the more advanced things in the future. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, we, we do actually don't always be stuck doing the boring stuff. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It seems like after you've hunted down all the things and everything just ends up becoming a variant of something in the, in the future that, uh, you, it starts getting boring because there's nothing else to detect. I mean, until you, until, you know, something like Emotet is like old hat. Cause we were, what was it? Like 
eight months ago we were talking about angler mr betcher and then all of a sudden it died right and then you know now we're doing emotet and whatever variants of it is and then all of a sudden right. it'll go away and something else will come back so it's a cyclical almost like a weather forecast you know cloudy with a chance of emotet with some you know <laughs> angler next week or pharaoh or whatever the hell we're going to call it next you know so all yeah, right yeah it's a, this game of uh, cat and mouse yeah right. and sometimes the mouse gets the cheese and sometimes the cat gets the mouse right but, right. Okay. Well, we do have a topic this week. Um, I had a I had a news article I was I was reading up about, um, and it was kind of a, a an ongoing thing to our last show that we did um, about supply chain security and how you know software that you use could cause issues if you are not, you know, maintaining it or watching out for, you know, it ha being handed off to new developer or what have you. Um, there was a news article about NPM, which for those of you who are not familiar with what NPM is, it is a, a package manager for JavaScript. It's called the Node Package Manager. It's um, allows you, it's, it's a framework that allows you to add packages to your web applications uh, using JavaScript. Um, use it quite a bit for, um, well, when I was installing things like TiddlyWiki or whatever, wiki systems, uh, you could install packages that would, you know, make your TiddlyWiki more extensible using NPM. And apparently they, uh, they had an update and it was supposed to be an update to fix something else from what I gathered. I could be wrong on that, but... Um, it was a it was a pre-production version of that and they were uh, apparently installing this pre-production version on a lot of production systems changed permissions on certain directories nothing major just etsy user and boot <laughs> which it's not a big, not a big deal no no and um, why did they did they say why they were installing it on non product on production when it was pre-production code um i i believe that there was some additional issues i'm trying to pull up the tech republic article to see if there was um there was a big hole i actually saw it on twitter and then there was a whole other big thing um traversing and running chone on wrong often critical five so yeah it was a bug 19883 uh was introduced in the build 570 release and um, that it was a pre-release version when people ran this and it was supposed to fix. So let me read this here. So running pseudo NPM will result in file permissions being reset across the system, breaking the operation of NPM, practically anything else that requires file permissions to work. <laughs> Uh, this is not where the problems start or end. However, this bug uh, was introduced in the 5.7 release, which, based on the blog post, seems to be a normal release. If you run NPM update, it will install a 5.7.0. There's no indication at all, not in the version string or not in the release announcement. This is a pre-release version of NPM. As it happens, a separate bug, 19.8.88, causes pre-release versions to be installed when NPM update is run. While the permissions bug had been patched in 5.7.1, you could update to by running, you could update it to run uh, using NPM update, but it also incorrectly lacks tags that wasn't ready for production. So there was a lot of issues apparently with mm. this, and people. People had issues. So instead of nice. pulling the 571 issue, a lot of people pulled the 570 and it, it borked their systems. They had to reinstall their OSs from scratch. Oof. Yeah, uh, you change boot and Etsy, yeah. you're, you're hosed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you would think that they would be able to at least use whatever shells they had available to escalate up to root and perhaps fix it. I don't know what they what the what it choned them to. Well, they they don't. It'd be hard to know what exactly happened. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, that didn't sound like fun though. Yeah, and it's rough because I mean, it, there's no trust there. I mean, it, it, I mean, did. Uh, it shouldn't have that. There shouldn't be a bug where you run NPM update and it'll automatically, you know, update to whatever the latest version is. It should, there should be a stable version that it says, okay, we're not going to update past five, six, nine because you know, of reasons or, or what have you. 
But yeah, that uh, I thought that's the way it did work. You know, you you basically said, OK, I want stable or I want the latest and greatest, which would get you hosed in this case. But yeah. 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 Um, yeah I'm not sure why the they said uh, it's been fixed, but the entire messy process revealed more fundamental problems. That's from ZDNet. Uh, so, yeah. Well, that's a huge mistake. You have a version that hoses your system and then you push it out for release no matter mm -hmm. what kind of release yeah. yeah yeah there's no trust there i mean it there you would think there'd be some kind of way for them to go okay what kind of changes is it going to make to the system um you know hopefully people who are running these updates or taking snapshots if they're using this in a, in a virtualized environment if they were just using it in a virtualized environment they would have fixed it by you know reverting the snapshot uh anybody with you know hard iron they're they're pretty much screwed i think in that case so um i think this i i think i think that would behoove people as part of their update process to have a back out procedure of well if this doesn't work we're going to revert to snapshot uh unless you're on hard you know hard iron or something but um and I'll take reasons why I'm not a sysadmin anymore for 100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no that that makes complete sense. Um I I am I'm fastidious about my snapshots though. Anytime I, you know, do any kind of major update or anytime I run package add, I always have at least two or three package or you know, two or three snapshots in case something like that does happen. Cuz invariably it does for me. Um I'm not very Yeah, you good. only have to get burnt. Well, sometimes twice or three times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, ZDNet asks the question that I did. What are you doing running brand new code on production system? This is sysadmin101. You don't run fresh release of any program on a working system. Capiche? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, but this is the DevOps thing, isn't it? You know, we fail forward. We don't. You know, we don't test new things. We right. just assume it's going to work. It's worked 150,000 times before. Why should we worry about it now? Um, unfortunately, people who rely on things like NPM, are, it's never going to, you know, they've learned a valuable lesson, I hope. But, I mean, I, I don't... Uh, I don't know, other than having a UAT, not, not UAT, but a regular testing system, uh, you know, how that's going to how that would fix them. I mean, even if, even if you would something as simple as a snapshot on a VM would have, you know, allowed them to, to fix that issue. So maybe that's a process issue on their part too. So. Yeah. Wow. According to at Nick's craft, mm -hmm. it chones slash. So basically everything. Yeah. 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 So um, bad coding practice too there. Apparently that bug was introduced by somebody who was writing code. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. Sysadmin, um, if, if you're going to update anything, it has to be on a test system that you could easily revert. Yeah. I, well, I would I would have to think nowadays. Well, I'm just I wondering. I remember us getting things like Heartbleed back at the place, and mm -hmm. everybody would say, oh, my God, we got to patch this now. And I, I would call my um, the sysadmin that night because the thing would break at five o'clock or 8 p.m. or whatever time. Yep. And I'd say, look, here's the patch, test this, and I'll talk to you in the morning. Yep. So he would test that evening. And then in the morning, we would have a plan all ready to go, right? Because he would have already tested it on a couple of different systems and then say, okay, the patch looks good from my perspective. Let's test it on whatever systems tonight. Right. And then get the rest of them the following day. So it would take two days, but at least he tested it that evening. He was ready to go in the morning to uh, to to come up with a plan for that evening. Yeah, yeah. My my other question is why were why were they running it? Uh, you know, it, it was it was pseudo npm. So you were basically running it with elevated permissions. Why are you running? npm and needing to run npm is anything other than a regular user it seems like they could run it as a regular user not running you know with you know you know extra um you know permissions or whatever um there are there are numerous ways multiple ways of running npm as a as a you know a regular user without having to do sudo npm so i mean that might be something else you want to look at in the future as well 
Um, we have links in the show notes to the discussions on running NPM not as a pseudo uh, or not without having to run pseudo. Um, I tend to run those things even even like um, uh, applications that I install. I it, they don't necessarily need to run as root. So um, I've installed Metasploit, run as a, as a regular user. Um, pretty much everything that I'm using for pen test framework, I, I run as myself. I don't run as a, as a, as a root. So it seems to me that there's some, you know, some coding issues with NPM over there with the developers over there. I'm shots fired. I know. Developers. <laughs> I know well, I'm going to uh, make some it enemies. It is a package manager apparently. Yeah. So I don't know, but maybe it, were, it has to have root. Not sure. Yeah, I don't know either. Um, but, you know, there should have been some kind of audit done and, you know, running NPM update shouldn't automatically pull whatever the latest nightly build is or whatever pre-production not ready for prime time stuff is. So there's there was a lot of things going on there. If it broke your systems, I'm sorry, but you guys should have probably done some testing before you pushed it onto your production systems. So, um, yeah, but... All right. Well, um, I look forward to your hate mail. So please <laughs> feel free to send that along. Um, I will own my comments because at Brian Break on Twitter. Yeah, at Brian Break on Twitter. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. So um, one thing I learned this week, uh, I was listening to another podcast, Risky Business. Um, you know, we were talking about the the you know and along the lines of you know being able to trust your your software that you're using in your environment. Um, I found that WordPress doesn't appear to have public file hashes. Um, so how do you trust the, you know, the downloads of, of your, your WordPress? How can you verify the integrity and that everything is, is proper? Um, I don't Just think you don't use it, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I don't know that there's a, well, because there's so many other fun options that your sales and marketing people can use. Right. Right. That are all equally as horrible. Yeah. They're all, yeah. So to give myself a little bit of, um, I don't know. How do I put this support in the decision to double click an executable file? Mm -hmm. I upload it to virus total and just check it out. Really? Right. If, if it's a month old and it has zero hits, chances are it's somebody would have found it to be malicious by then. Right. Now, if it's just created that day, mm, you might want to hold off a few days or, you know, weigh the risks, okay? Because it's got, what, 60-some-odd virus engines that that evaluate that binary to see if it's malicious or not. And if none of them pick it up, um, that tells you something. If so, one or more says that it's malicious, maybe you should wait. Yeah. Okay? So, so, what, so. I'm, what I'm hearing Mr. Betcher tell people is don't patch. So, um, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't patch. No, cause usually when WordPress comes out with something there, it's fairly, you know, like you need to fix your stuff immediately cause it's going to affect anything, you know, internet facing. So, you know, um, I, I just wish that there was a way for us to verify that, that it came from them. I mean, you know, people say, oh, yeah, you're using TLS to connect to their website, but that doesn't ver that, that doesn't do integrity. All it does is, is you know, make sure that the, you know, the, the telephone call, if you will, or the, the connection from you to them is as secure as it can be, but it doesn't verify the contents of the, of the files on the system, so. Um, yeah, and, and can you really trust them that they weren't hacked e either? That's my point. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say, yeah. 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 Post their stuff there. So, uh, you know, anything I install, I upload it to Virus Total anyway just to see, just to give me a little more information. Right. Because it gives you when the file was created, whether it's signed, you know, all kinds of things. You can also do a SIG check on it to see if it's signed by the company. And it has a, a valid certificate. And then Virus Total will tell you if any of those virus engines think that it's malicious. Well, what if the code isn't signed? If it's a reputable piece of code or a front, supposed to be from a reputable company, it should be signed. Does WordPress not, sign their code? Then that's another indicator, right? Yeah. I don't think WordPress actually does code signing. 
that's that was and the if other they thing. don't that that's fine at least you know that right, right? but if yeah so you it wouldn't want to trust a signed one from them <laughs> oh right right <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I would have hoped that they would announce that, but from what I've from what I've read and and heard about in their Slack, the the idea of doing code signing or, um, you know, doing you know that kind of thing is is fairly contentious in that uh, community. Which I'm like, why wouldn't you want to have that additional security? You know, have two or three people who can, you know, bless that bill and go, yes, we are, you know, this is a good build, you know go with you know the dev gods uh and and use but it, it appears that you know the they're they're not code signing um i do have some links on how to do that in our show notes um best practices for code signing from thought apparently not only can you get tls and ssl certs you can also get code signing certs and they're different than uh like ssl certs so they are uh, yeah um, i've 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 had a deal with code signing certs only once but it was definitely different than because i used to do a whole bunch of webmaster stuff so it was definitely different than having to deal with just regular ssl well okay so what what is it is it like a, it adds um it adds a non-repudiation factor like a pgp key i don't know enough about it to talk about it so you didn't uh, you didn't you did it right or you you were doing code? i think i did it right it was a while ago oh, i just know okay. it was a lot more in depth than just installing a regular SSL key. Right. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, there was more you had to go through to process it too. Like you actually had to, like, to buy an SSL cert, you can just say you're this company, and they don't give a, they don't care. Right. Right. So, so yeah, if you download a, cert. if you download a copy of LogMD and you right click it, hit Properties, you'll see the di Digital Signatures tab. Yeah. Oh, so you've signed your code. Uh huh. How did, how did you do that? I set it up in Visual Studio really? to sign it. So, so you have to you have to pay for the digital signature, right? So somebody, uh, some other third party will vet you, right? And, and make sure you're that company. Yes. Okay, so but, this is about as effective as TLS and SSL. You could get a code signing cert from anybody. Uh huh. Yeah, but you have to prove you're that company. Where with SSL, you don't really have to prove you're the company that you bought the SSL cert. Okay. I mean, you have to have you have to own the domain, but right. They don't like prove you're XYZ company right. when you buy this SSL cert. But with the code signing one, you did. How how did you do that, Mister Betcher? Did you send them some letterhead, or did you say, "Hey, I'm kind of a big deal. Here's my podcast that I'm on," or something? Yes. <laughs> really? So, yes, you you can buy it from. Well, we got ours from Digicert because okay. they're pretty reputable, right? So, yep. So okay. we proved who we were. That we actually owned a company. Yada yada yada, and uh, they sent us a certificate. Okay, very nice. Um, how is it good for a certain amount of time? Is it like a TLS cert, or is it like in perpetuity? Yes, it's good for a certain amount of time. Now, if you've got one that is expired, just make sure that the um, that the code was created before the signature expired. So it's okay to use um, code that has an expired certificate as long as the code was compiled before the certificate expired, right? Okay. That makes sense. I mean... Yeah, you don't want to. It was valid at the time that it was compiled. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, very cool. Um, yeah, I, I had no idea. So I was I was doing some research on that uh, last night and 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 today, trying to find out. So how many people have a code signing cert for you guys? Is it in your, is it in the workflow or, you know, who has access to it? Is it just you or is it you and Mr. Goff? Uh, who, who, who has access to all that? You mean who has access to the cert itself? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, who yeah, can sign code? I do, since I can compile it. Oh, because you're the head developer? Yes. You're the only developer. <laughs> yeah. Me and my team. Right. Okay. All right. And and that's is that a, is that a, a best practice, or is there a better way of doing it, and you guys are just doing it that way because you're a startup? I don't know. I, I've never been a developer in an enterprise. I don't know um 
it, what the what the best practice is. But yeah, you do install the certificate on your machine, and then you have to run some commands when you compile to use that certificate. Okay. So you, you sign it, you, you sign the code with that after you've compiled the, the executable, presumably. Yep. Okay. All right. It's, uh, yeah, I've got it automated to where it'll compile, then sign it, and then write it. Okay. Very yep. nice. Um, yeah, I, I would be interested in finding out how other people are doing it, because uh, it seems like... Uh, there, I mean, yeah, with large development groups, you might have more than one key. Ooh, sorry. Um, or you might have only certain developers can, you know, bless it. Like in change management purposes, it would only be signed after, you know, testing was done and, and release was done. So when you make release or whatever, then it would automatically sign the sign the code. But if you're in testing, it wouldn't necessarily sign the code every time, right? Right. It depends on the process. Now it it's it's nothing to sign the code, right? Even if it's test. Yeah. So it depends on the process. Oh, okay. So it doesn't add any overhead or any down. You know, no. uh, it doesn't take any longer to to do. No, not really. Oh, okay. I didn't know if there was. You know, you well, you don't want signed versions of your code just sitting somewhere on somebody's box, right? Because, I mean, if somebody owned your box and they had a build of your code from two weeks ago and it just happened to be a test build, do you want the possibility of the sign... Does it keep a copy of the certificate inside the code um, that could be extracted? No. Okay, so it just it just puts a hash in there or something? Yeah. Okay. It it will it will yeah. Basically it'll tell you, hey, this is a valid certificate or whatever used to sign this code. Okay. But the um the certificate itself would be on the machine that did the compiling, like the private key. Yeah. Um so okay, so this is this harkens back to like certificate signing stuff that I did when I was with a with a government contractor, but the problem was the box that had the cert that signed everything was isolated from the network. You couldn't do anything on it other than log in, no internet connectivity. So it sounds like you're doing it very startupy, and you should have a separate box for that code signing cert, sir. <laughs> well, who said I didn't? Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I just assumed. I, I just assumed. I'm, I apologize. Um, okay. Hey, no problem. No, I'm, I'm not, as long as you have a, a, for example, if you do it in Visual Studio, you would need a Windows machine to put the certificate into, like you actually install the certificate into the operating system. Oh, so it's in the, in the, in the keychain somewhere. Yeah, oh, it's, I don't know if it's keychain on Windows, but in, in Apple no, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Something different. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, I uh I I so it, it's somewhat like uh you know all those other ones like PGP and um or it's kind of a cross between a PGP and a TLS cert. So I mean it verifies that you were the only person who signed it. Um if so if if Goff uh, started doing development or code or anything he could get himself his own cert and it would say it was signed by you know this was verified or released by michael goff right does it have your name on your cert no it has a company name oh just said oh company name okay okay yep. well i guess that makes sense i mean uh, microsoft and all the other big ones probably have a, a generic type of signing cert yeah i wonder how they do that they gotta have more than one you know, backups, you know. I have absolutely no idea. That would be cool to have somebody on that actually has like run. Yeah, you, you know, know, a real company that actually does real yeah. development and stuff. No, 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 it's somebody that, I, that that has like spun up and has controlled all of the, all of the uh, certificate services and all that kind of stuff. Because, yeah. I mean, to, to like spin up your own um, CA... Right. Like if you if you know if you do that like internally, if you want to like use uh, certificates to send on the Wi-Fi or yeah. you know to log in or whatever. 
No, that's um, true. I mean, um, uh, Microsoft and Google, and I'm sure their own, they're their own CAs. They sign their own stuff. Right. And they're a trusted certificate authority of their own, you know, which is it's that kinda, stuff can get really complicated. It's a bit <laughs> redundant, isn't it? I trust my own code because I wrote it at my company. So, <laughs> you know, where, where's the third party there, you know? So, I mean, because that's the whole point of the code signing cert. It's supposed to be an independent third party, but, you know, but what happens when you're that third party <laughs> yeah exactly exactly so um it's just the different department oh really you've so, got your development department and your code signing department right and so they're you, big enough to do that i'm sure so Probably. the code is the code signing department sitting right next to the code developing department on, at your desk Probably. there no but they just report to them all right <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Um, you know, Mr. Betcher, I want to hold on the decision-making stuff. I think uh, I think we've got enough here to, that we talked about. Um, I don't I don't think we can we should go any further. I think we're we're doing fairly well on our time. You're, you you said you you made a decision on the decision making, huh? I did. Oh. I did. Um, yeah. So we had something else that we wanted to talk about as well, but I think because of time constraints, uh, um, we're, we're going to stop here and, um, you know, we have a few announcements that we want to talk about, but, um, we, you know, thanks, thankfully we have too much stuff. So we've got shows that we can, you know, build upon in the, in the future. Okay. So, but we're yeah. jumping into this first thing next time. Yes, sir. I guess. Yavo. Wait a minute. I thought my thing was next. Yeah. Oh, yeah. M Ms. Berlin's thing at the <laughs> very bottom. Make promises. <laughs> Ms. Berlin's like a typical parent making promises you can't keep. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, yeah. Um, be okay. So the one last thing we got to talk about is B sides Nashville. Uh, David Seibuck, uh, one of the moderators on our on our Slack channel, phenomenal person good dude uh had the idea of starting the resume review and the career advice channels and on our on our slack channel uh he approached the the b-sides nashville folks and said hey i'd like to do a resume and interview workshop uh akin to what happened at DerbyCon last year with miss bats and miss hacks for pancakes on twitter that's their handles i don't know them by anything else um so i know them by miss hacks and miss hacks for pancakes or miss <laughs> miss bad and miss hacks for pancakes so um it's good opsec it's good opsec yeah so um i know he did say that the b-sides nashville is sold out and they have a wait list but um if you happen to get a ticket and you need to or you would like to do a resume review or a mock interview uh that is available at b-sides nashville you can also reach out to dave cybuck uh, at dp cybuck on twitter uh if you want to you know talk to him about anything uh or you can come on our slack and and do a resume review as well we have some people you know they just throw the resumes out there and they go here show me what it is you know show me how i suck and how i can improve it um we actually had a couple in the last few days they put it up on google and said hey you know put some comments out there so um if you're at b-sides nashville you know go and sign up for that and uh, you know have a take a look at your uh you know, take a look at your resume, have them take a look at that and, you know, see what you can do to improve your possibility of uh, employment. So, yeah. Um, I will be there with all of my children. Shut up. You're going to be in B-Size Nashville. Yep. Did you get a ticket? I got four tickets. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and he, uh, I asked him the other day and he's like, yeah, they're waitlisted. So, I mean, that's, that's impressive. It's impressive. Yeah. So like I'm an eight hour drive, but I really, really do. It's a very, very good B sides. Okay. Very cool. And when is that? When is that? April. It's usually in April. Okay. Well, here's what you should do since you don't have to drive eight hours, get your kid, your boy who's 16, get his permit and he can, he can drive the eight hours. He could help you drive the eight hours. He doesn't have to know. drive all how? of it. You know, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. You're going to be in the passenger seat. That's how that's how permit works, right? I know. Well, so. you can even if you're awake and you're just sitting in the passenger seat watching, it it is more restful than actually driving. Right. Yeah, even though you're white and we have done it. We we've, we've driven cross country Montana, California, 
um, Tennessee. We've driven all over the place. Well, yeah, yeah. Between, between you and, and the Mrs. Betcher and, and your oldest, right? Yeah, well, only on the last trip, the oldest was able to drive a little. Right. That really helps when you have three people who can drive, you know, so you just trade off every four to six hours and you're good to go. Yep. So, yeah. So, yeah, um, hit up B-Sides uh, Nashville. It's in Aug- It's in April. Um, also, B-Sides Springfield, Missouri, which uh, is near and dear to my heart because it's my hometown, one of my hometowns. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it's in July, July 14th. I'm going right. to gonna maybe buy tickets and go to that. Their CFP is actually going on right now until the 1st of April. So, actually, it's April 1st is when it ends. So, if you're interested in finding out about that and submitting for B-Sides Springfield, Missouri, uh, you can go to their website and find it uh, just look for b-side springfield missouri so i'll also be at b-sides indy uh okay. in indianapolis on the 10th on the 9th and 10th so in two weeks cool all right well maybe we'll get some audio from that no pressure i'm just saying you know if you can get some that'll be cool Man, the last couple times i've tried to get audio it's gone terribly wrong well, i know you had food poisoning at that one joint and then uh, you know i i didn't get anything at b-side seattle i was supposed to but i didn't feel like i should do that so but, yeah all right well um mr betcher um i apologize for not getting to your thing we will get to it in a couple of weeks miss berlin you know has got her thing no, next we can week. do his next i was just no was just no, no 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 anyway so mr betcher uh other than uh being a, a developer who signs code uh maybe you can tell people how they can get a hold of you and talk about various code signing things yeah well, you can visit our website. It's log-md.com or hit me up on Twitter at BetcherPwned, B-O-E-T-T-C-H-E-R-P-W-N-E-D. Very cool. You want to talk about anything? All right. Um, Ms. Berlin, how about you? Slide into the DMs. <laughs> wow. That's <laughs> what all the hip cats are saying these days. Uh, at, on Slack or Twitter. Uh, at info sister i n f o s y s y s t i r very cool um yeah so um break sec you can find us at break sec on twitter b r a k e s e c uh at brian break on twitter um you can find me there that's where the hate mail goes that's where the hate mail goes yeah actually the dms are only open on the break sec because we uh we're doing invite only to our slack because we're trying to cut down on the possibility of bots so i apologize to the handful of people who did not reply back to my dms because you have no followers no tweets and your tweets are locked so that screams i'm a bot to me sadly yeah. i'm sorry so um especially when your uh, english is not your first language and i apologize for that but i need to be able to have some tete-a-tete back and forth with you to say you know hi how are you what's your interest here's your thing here's my thing you know talking about stuff so um yep. yeah um so yeah there's there's a handful of people that i have not given the twitter invite to because they don't reply back to tweets so um yeah we are very active on our slack we've got a lot of people on there a lot of good information a lot of good discussion uh we miss berlin's uh class is uh in its third well, week we had to postpone we'll start it. again <laughs> well because there was a holiday monday and you were in the hospital so we're not you know that's that that was a thing and we told people in enough time so um sec session three of four will be this monday actually tomorrow the 26th tomorrow. Um, so, um, yeah, look forward to that. That was a, it's a really great class. A lot of people are attending. Um, you know, there's still time. I know it's, uh, like last minute, but, uh, I have a SANS 504 course in the Seattle area. If you want to join it, um, uh, March 1st is when the first class starts. Technically you can sign up for that. So, uh, if that's something you want to take a 504 course with yours truly, I don't know why you would, but you know, I've, I've managed. I totally would if I lived over there. Would you? I would. Just a heckle. If I didn't have to pay for it. Oh, well that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the downside in it, having to pay for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can, uh, you can go to the link in the show notes to, to the class for that. Uh, you will have to pay nearly the full amount unless you can find three other friends and then you, you can get about a 20% discount with the buy two get one free offer that they have. So, um, 
we will be at uh, up at the Microsoft campus up in Redmond, so it's going to be fairly swanky uh, uh, Red West uh, building that we're going to be doing the class in for the next seven weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. So um, we're on TuneIn Radio, uh, Google Play Store, iTunes. Please leave feedback if you'd like. We appreciate that. Thank you to our Patreon donors. Um, that helps us offset the cost of hosting uh, costs and SoundCloud and the other things where we try to put the podcast. So, um, and also equipment stuff. The the Patreon people were directly responsible for upgrading our audio this year. So that was Woo-hoo. that was fantastic. So, all right. Well, um, that was it. Um, you know, I'm I'm good for this week. We our you know the breaking down security podcast here so um have a great week be nice to one another and we will talk to you again soon bye-bye bye